for your next meeting and coming to the stage. Please put your hands together for Matt Winter. So the Popeye's chicken sandwich is very popular, right? Oh. Has me worried, because the last time white people were this obsessed with poultry, it resulted in genocide. Oh. That's a Thanksgiving joke for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> little history lesson. <laughs> I treat homeless people like they're invisible by being scared when I see them. <laughs> Have y'all heard of Salt Life? Like Salt Life seeing the stickers? So apparently that has less to do with body positivity than I thought. Because in my defense, we're a lot closer to a McDonald's than we are the ocean. <laughs> is anybody an anti-vaxxer in here? That is great. Well, I, don't, I don't know if they're real or not. <laughs> but, okay, okay, let's keep it down. I've got more material to do. Save it for later. Fucking greedy. People are against vaccines because they believe it could give their children autism. I think if you believe that, the chances of your kids having it are already higher. <laughs> I have a lot of hate in my heart, if you couldn't tell by the jokes earlier. But my doctor assures me it's cholesterol. <laughs> People love to shit on Confederate statues. No, that's first. Birds love to shit on Confederate statues. People love to hate Confederate statues. This is where we bring that laughter. You kind of... Hey! You know, yeah, you tried to keep it earlier. You got to spread it out, man. You got to spread it out. Every time someone's called a snowflake, I can't help but think of it as a compliment. Because it's never snowed, and I've been like, that's so beautiful. Fuck Obama. <laughs> White nationalist makes no sense to me because you know a white person caused all the problems. <laughs> it wasn't a black person's idea for them to shave their head, wear a leather vest, and get Nazi tattoos. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go a little lighthearted here. <laughs> I've had a poop so big. <laughs> that it made me think being gay wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> I got more stuff, guys. Come on. All right. Body positivity has gone too far when I see people wear things that make me comfortable with my body. Probably <laughs> skip that one. <laughs> Everyone is surprised Instagram is so popular, but fake bitches have been popular for as long as I can remember. <laughs> there were just Barbies and Cabbage Patch Kids back then. <laughs> this will be my last, I think. It's not blinking yet. I don't want to hear that song. You guys want to hear it? I don't want to fucking hear that song. They say getting older is hard, but for some men, it's soft. <laughs> All right, one more, be quiet. One more, then you can laugh and I appreciate the shit out of it. I was disappointed with the show Deadliest Catch when I found out it was about crabs. Gonorrhea is definitely worse. Right? That word is also a lot harder to spell than it is to catch. But that was my time. Okay, we got it. Thanks. Matt Winters, everybody! Lewis, y'all, Lewis. All right, man, we had one home, y'all. Y'all feeling good?
suicide because they'll label it a hate crime. That wasn't even that bad. I hate handicapped drivers because you know if they cause an accident, they're not going to be able to get out and help. We got to lighten up. So it, it goes both ways. Some of this is lighter, some of this is darker. I have a lot of hate in my heart but my doctor assures me it's cholesterol. <laughs> Y'all didn't like that one, you don't like this one. I hate large groups of people. With this being America, that's three or more. <laughs> if you didn't get it, I'm not gonna tell you what, what it's about. <laughs> people wish dogs could talk, but I can't stand the language they have now. Barking, y'all, come on. Fine, y'all like dogs bark, bark. How about this now? This is lighthearted. This is lighthearted, fun. I've had a poop so big that it made me think being gay wouldn't be that bad. All right, people are lighting up, okay. There's a lot of racial turmoil, right? which made me think that I hate crackers has nothing to do with the New Year's resolution to cut carbs. Come on, come on. The first thing every homeless person tells me is they're a vet, but as soon as I bring on my dog, they have no idea what to do. I'll tell them, that's why you're homeless. Okay, so this next one, ooh. Let me get it real quick. Make a wish is a great foundation, going to Disney World, meeting famous people. I think we should instead make them do taxes, walk in a, work in a warehouse, or go to an MLM seminar. You know, welcome that looming death. <laughs> well, yeah. Body positivity has gone too far when people wear things that make me comfortable with my body. And that's it. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. What's up, Fed, y'all? All right, so for me, we're in five minutes. All right. Uh, Y'all, we only have three comics left. You guys have some energy still? <laughs> material and here's some more right but I wrote it down as you can tell right so I don't believe in ghosts you guys believe in ghosts 
Yes. yes. We'll get to that later. And I'm being honest, right? I think behind every ghost story is probably a, just a homeless person, right? I mean, I love Atlanta, but I hate homeless people. I don't wish any harm to them. I just wish they were so goddamn creepy, right? Because just the other day, I was here two weeks ago. I'm in my car. I'm pulling my jacket out. My back's turned. I see a glimpse. Is that? Right? So I pull my jacket out, and this homeless person just peers out of fucking nowhere. Hey man, got a dollar? I'm like, God, God damn. Well, I like to assume he came up to me like the cartoon. <laughs> right? It was like. I don't even know what I'm talking about. No, so he yells at me, I yell at him, and I go, God damn. And then he runs away scared that I yelled at him, but he's yelling, I don't work here. It was a standalone parking lot. Nobody works here. And I have never accidentally thought a homeless person worked anywhere. <laughs> Maybe for laughing at my laughter. <laughs> right? But it's like, I get why they're crazy. They're alone with their thoughts all day long. If you're alone with your thoughts for five minutes, don't you have an existential crisis? Oh, well, I guess I should go see a psychiatrist. Thank you. It's very informative. Right? But honestly, I think behind most ghost stories is like some homeless dude named like fucking Boo Boo or some shit. Right? Can you think of a better homeless name? I thought Boo Boo. There's Boo Boo out there. Because they never tell you their name, and I'm never going to fucking ask the homeless person. <laughs> right? But it's like, think about it. It goes through the most mundane shit. It's always some old lady's house, and she's always watching Matlock, and she's like, <laughs> I heard the cabinets in the kitchen open. I looked over, there was nobody there. It's like, oh shit, not the cabinets. Those fucking savages. But the camera on those shows never pans out to see Boo Boo running away. I don't work here! <laughs> they were just looking for a dollar. Right? <laughs> Let's get to the ghost part. Right? So, and this isn't even really a joke. If ghosts existed, would they really have clothes? Honestly, yes, you shook your head. No, no, the fuck, what the fuck? Why is that a ghost from the 1800s? You never see a ghost floating around with Yeezys on. <laughs> right, it makes no sense. It'd be like, real ghost stories, if they were real, would be like, I don't know why, but everything waste hack, it's not over. Ghost walking around. <laughs> Knock shit off tables and stuff. Come on, think about it. Who believed the ghost? Was it you? It was you. Do you still believe in ghosts? Absolutely. Do you think clothes die? Clothes don't die. I ain't never had a shirt that died before. Nobody buries that shit. And all the ghosts from the 1800s. That doesn't even make any fucking sense. Now I'm just adding that on to why I don't believe in ghosts. But y'all can think whatever y'all want. It's not going to sense to me. But have you ever noticed how every homeless person has the same crazy shit, they have the same stories, they're all vets, and there's not even that many sick animals. So it makes no sense to me. <laughs> that was a fucking dad joke. I wrote that down. I'm like, that's the daddest fucking joke I could think of. Well, that, I mean, you did. I appreciate that. You started to clap. Jesus Christ. I don't know if that's a good thing or if it's like, well, I'm just gonna clap. He's, he's trying. <laughs> and I am trying, so I appreciate the fuck out of that. <laughs> What's weird is it's 2019 now. Ghosts, not ghosts, fucking homeless people. Same thing, right? Homeless people are fucking ghosts. They still ask for a dollar, right? With the economy, shouldn't they be asking for 374? And you know that's the right number because I did the math. Because it's not even, right? But I did do the math. I don't know what the fuck the economy is for a dollar if you asked 20 years ago. Fuck if I know. But you believed it. Because I had confidence. <laughs> right? And it's weird. It's like... 
There, I was like, I didn't see a light, but I was like, it's got to be close. I didn't see the light. <laughs> you pour out what you want into the glass, and then give me the rest. Unless you want the whole thing. Oh yeah. Shot clock. Oh, <laughs> oh, dude, I'm the host. If I put shit in there, I would tell you. <laughs> I'm coming back tomorrow night. Like, hey, I'll take the kick. All right, cheers. So, everybody in the back, we're talking, you motherfuckers. <laughs> we have just a few more comics left, ladies and gentlemen, and unfortunately, I almost forgot the next comic's name because I went through all this bullshit here. <laughs> Uh, and I did it. it just came back to me. Give a warm welcome to Matt Winters. Thanks, buddy. I was like, I can introduce myself if I have to. That's fine. So I'll ask I really like kids, which is great, as long as you don't get specific. <laughs> but that's not what my jokes are about. Yeah, so I do a new five minutes, and I have a shit memory, so buckle in. This shit's dumb. So, there's all these great medical breakthroughs, right? Every year you hear of them in mice, right? They eradicated Alzheimer's in mice. I didn't even know they could forget shit. What are they even forgetting? Is that cheese? Is that a cat over there? Nobody fucking knows. They also found green tea reduces kinds of cancer in mice, <laughs> right? Again, they're going to outlive us at this point, right? And how are people even against this shit? Animal testing is bad. They're sipping green tea. What are they afraid of? They're gonna be British. <laughs> right, and then the scientists like, Doc, I give them green tea. Maybe they had a stroke. They sound real weird. No, that's just British, man. It's what? <laughs> Yeah, um, mice don't even fucking talk, right? <laughs> I wrote that and I was like, everyone's gonna be like, does it make any fucking sense? <laughs> Fuck it, what am I gonna do, right? But these are the reasons I don't use mouse traps. In 20 years, mouse are gonna live, or mice <laughs> are gonna live to be 100 years old, they're gonna know English and shit, and I'm gonna be like, remember that one time in my garage where I was like, you know, just get out of here. Just just shoot out of here. <laughs> right? I'm gonna be the one to be like, that's me. <laughs> so when you eradicate humans, I didn't kill you. <laughs> that's right, I actually am turning pages. This is like one of those when you're a kid and you're in the library and there's a person reading, that is me, and you are my children. <laughs> <laughs> well, not some of you. I wouldn't. I don't know if people claim you guys, <laughs> but you got me, Dad. I love you, son. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'll meet you outside. I'll park right over there. I'll see. <laughs> but so continue, continue. People are scared of robots or AI taking over the world. They must not know all these medical advances that are taken on in mice. But I'm not going to be worried about robots or AI taking over jobs until I stop paying. See, ah, until I stop paying. That'd be weird. But as, until I stop seeing people that hold signs, right? It's like do 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 do. Literally anything can do that. So you can't be scared of losing your job when someone's spinning a sign next to a Baskin Robbins sign that says, hey, Baskin Robbins is right here. And you're like, well, no duh, I saw that sign from three streets ago, but you're doing great to let me know that it's right there. I even go deeper. You guys wanna go deeper into that? It's like, what kind of union do they have when they're still spinning shit, when they could just set the sign on the ground and does the same thing? Poles are like the immigrant workers of the sign holders. 
Because they're stealing all their jobs. <laughs> God, that's so stupid, right? <laughs> all right. So every time something happens that's majorly violent, right? Like the New Zealand shit, which is sad, but they try to point video games. And I got the light, but you'll hear the next shit later, I guess. But thanks for laughing at me and loving me, that one dude right there in the green sweat. I appreciate it. <laughs> Go in the night. I got notes and I'm recording, so I dropped the fake laugh, that'd be awesome. I'd hate to have to add it later to everybody. Okay, can you hear me now? You want to say that? Awesome. I'm pro choice. You guys pro choice? But I'm pro-choice for the entire life cycle. Who am I to tell somebody they shouldn't off themselves? I don't know how shitty their life is. I'm sorry, this is a new five minutes. <laughs> so I'll just keep the laughs up, right? Fuck, dude. So it's like, when someone's depressed, one of the first things they tell you to do is maybe you should call a suicide hotline. That's a fucking call center. Right? It's like no one works their way up to a call center. There's not one happy person that works there. It's like, who's helping who at that point? I imagine the calls are like, this is Sharonda at Generic Suicide Hotline. How may I help you? Well, I didn't call for tech support. I'm depressed and I'm contemplating suicide. Yeah, no shit. I work at a fucking call center. But it's like, I have depressed friends, I try to hang out with them, but they throw some depressing shit at you. It's like, just take my friend out to dinner, and he's like, dude, my life's not going so well, I work in a redneck hallway, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> he calls his house a redneck hallway, can you guess what that is? No. It's a fucking trailer. Oh. <laughs> right? So then I'm like, this dude's fucking gone already. So he's like, bro, Sarah broke up with me. And I'm like, yeah, judging by the last few, I don't think you can do better either. Because I'm going to be honest, right? But I still want to be there for them. I don't want them to off themselves. <laughs> but I also don't want to be their life coach. Because I'm barely my own life coach. I'm not even together as it is. I'm one old lady on a Sunday stroll at 5 p.m. on a work day from going on a rampage. <laughs> right? It's like, what the fuck? 5 p.m. has been rush hour ever since their ass was in the back of that double horse-drawn carriage. It pisses me off because you know they woke up at 4 a.m. just to watch Matlock. <laughs> I got to turn the page on, I'm sorry. I actually read this before, but I couldn't remember it all. <laughs> but it's like, you gotta imagine, like, every time they go out, they're surprised by the traffic. And it's like, these people, they're always in a rush. That's my old lady voice, I'm sorry. I can't do so well. <laughs> right, it's like, yeah, because I have a job and a life. You economy destroying wench. And then they're like, why do I not use it for tattoos? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> right, but to be a life coach, though, I feel like your life has to be the pit. Because everything they say has this tiny nugget of depression. <laughs> I gotta look at good girl. <laughs> I don't even know where the fuck I'm at. Alright. So remember the part where I took my friend out that was depressed, right? Driving him home, we pull up to the fucking trailer park. He looks at me in this low and feeble voice. He's like, dude, I haven't seen this many hallways since a mental institution. I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ, that's why you're depressed. You sit out every day and you live here. Like, what the fuck? Right? And it's the same goes for dating. There's a lot of things to look out for. Father issues being one of them. And I used to only think father issues was a thing a woman could have. But with the news recently, I've learned it's also a religious thing. 
Y'all need to watch more of the news if you didn't get that shit. <laughs> right? And sticking with religious things, being pro-choice, one of the biggest battles is knowing when life begins. Right? If it's at conception, we need to add nine months to everybody's age, which is really going to throw off pedophiles. I imagine you're just like, well, Johnny, I'm going to have to let you go. I was just unlocking the shed or whatever. And nobody's ever surprised what a pedophile looks like, right? They got those 90 gla- those nineties looking glasses, balding on top, grown ass man, ugly ass sweater that nanny knit together while she's waiting to go in a drawer at 5 p.m. Why are there so many cars on the road? God damn it, you know what you're doing, old lady. One more page, John. <laughs> Stick with me. Maybe I can get it out of here. <laughs> All right. You can do it. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, fucking course they got a mustache. Makes him look like a sheriff of a small town in the 1800s. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but as he's opening the cage or whatever, because remember, I said something about letting the little kid go. Because he's turning 13 now. And the dude's like, well, little Johnny, 13, man. Go off the sweet spot. I'm not just gonna touch any kid. <laughs> Do his telling this to little Johnny, right? <laughs> so Johnny's gonna leave, and then let's fast forward, right? Eight years from now, you gotta remember, Johnny was 13 at this point, so eight years from now, Johnny's a fucking adult. <laughs> He's sitting on the cage, oh fuck.